Jeff Nelson is not only a poet, he's a pastor. He brings a well-performed, well-written spiritual flavor to the mix that is unmatched anywhere on the scene. Thus ends the total vibe that I have for Jeff Nelson because he's one of the most humble poets that I've ever met. Believe me, we are not known for humility, which is true. <laughs> um, he's been a member of Detroit Slam team several times, but um, he and Lionel Welsh met around 2008 and used to hang around the job exchange for Echo versus Friday Night's Open Mic, where DJ Andre works. So give it up for the DJ. <laughs> And when he walked up to the open mic, she was like, mm, we'll see what's going to happen. And yeah, she was not ready. And guarantee you, I don't think you are either. So please give a warm round of applause and a great, great welcome to poet Jeff Nelson. My day job, I am a, I'm a pastor at a small Methodist church over in uh, Redford, Michigan. And uh, what tomorrow's holiday reminds me is that I share the vocation um, that claimed uh, Reverend King's life as well. And it reminds me of what, uh, well, maybe what the true essence of that vocation ought to be. Um, to claim that title of uh, pastor, uh, of uh, reverend, is a reminder that our job isn't to play church, but to, uh, um, but to make church um, revolutionary and liberating in the, in the world around us. And, this holiday serves as a kind of a call to call to reminder for folks like me who call that that vocation the same uh, um, to, to what what it is we ought to be about. Um, I don't know if this is true or not, but I've, I've heard it. I, I hope it's true. It, um, it could be just legendary, but the the story goes that once uh, someone asked uh, Dr. King what uh, what writer uh, most influenced his thought and. He said the writings of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were the, were the places for which the seeds of the civil rights movement uh, animated his soul. And that's a reminder to me that those ancient texts that we have so uh, neutered and made so comfortable and um, ought, to, ought to afflict us. Um, to do the to do the real work, and so today's poem's a little bit about that. I wrote it on the occasion of the baptism of my first son, uh, Casey John Nelson. Uh, Casey John was born on June 6, two thousand and six. Six six six, right? The preacher boy had a preacher. Yeah, I know. You can't you can't make that stuff up, people. You really can't. You, you can't. We tried to get that. We're like, get this in before midnight, doctor. We got we got to do this. Uh, um, he was born on 666. Yes, a couple of nights we thought he was actually possessed by the devil, but it uh, um, hasn't been too bad. Um, in my tradition, uh, the Methodist tradition, we often uh, baptize infants. And they're brought forward, and usually what that is, is this really cute moment where a little water is sprinkled on, and everybody stands up and oohs and ahs, and it's really cute. Um, I didn't want a cute moment for my kid. I wanted him to be immersed to be immersed in the kind of tradition that tomorrow's holiday reminds me of, uh, of what it is that this vocation of, uh, of being a follower of God is really all about. So this is a poem I wrote on the occasion of my son's baptism. And it's called, uh, For My Son, On the Occasion of His Baptism. <laughs> <laughs> Titles would come a little later in my life. It goes, son, son never settled. Sun never settled for just a sprinkle, a few dainty drops of dew at daybreak, a water whose wetness is barely enough to wake you. No sun, the man to be dumped, plan to be plunged, surrender to that sweet sinking sensation found only on Easter morning when the packed church sings Amazing Grace with no music and her eyes close. That's right, son, never settle. Never settle for just a sprinkle. Never settle to just skim the surface. No sun dive deep into the dark and drown. May you drown to that temptation to believe that net worth and self-worth are the same. May you drown to that lie that lions and lambs must forever live on opposite ends of the zoo. And if we pull back the straw in the manger, we'll see stars and stripes. And that Ishmael and Isaac will never understand the promise of the promised land. And sun, may you drown. May you drown to that lie that white is right and brown is black. And love can be defined or confined in a straightness that will not eventually be bent towards violence. 
Tomorrow may you wade in the water with a wounded woodworker, who with the turn of his cheek turned the whole world upon itself so that we might see that that whole water into wine thing? Shoot you all, that was just a parlor trick. Because you see, the real magic was turning poverty into power and despair into desire and suffering into salvation so that when the end of a broken sword is pushed deep enough into Mother Earth, she might produce lettuce and leeks, cabbage and carrots, potatoes, pumpkins, peppers, and peace. You see, when that preacher pours that prevening presence, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray not that you drown, but that you rise again. That you emerge from the submerge of your watery grave, a new creation. That you crawl to the edge of the infinite abyss and scream with your hands held high above your head like your daddy did on that cold autumn afternoon when with two outs in the bottom of the ninth, the ball that left Maglio's bat landed our tigers on the cusp of an impossible dream. And for that moment, heaven simply bent down and kissed the city of the car. Son, may your throat always choke on a note called hope. May you catch moonbeams and mayonnaise jars and skip stones across nimbus clouds. And may you always see tomorrow through the eyes of a caterpillar who, despite its appearance, knows that its destiny is to fly. Listen to in the smoke rose from the lining of his jean jacket. I mean, 
bloody terrorize those locker leading halls, bare knuckles scraping the buff wax floor beneath but Would he threaten the life of that skinny little kid who still showered after gym class in his underwear? She collared him, grabbed him by the back of the neck, lifted him three inches above the floor, and then set him down until his sorry butt was planted in front of the principal's desk. Simply put, you didn't mess with Mrs. Beebe. <laughs> but you see, something magical happened in that classroom between the hours of 103 and 158 every day. Words grew wings. Pencil and paper fell in love. She wore this grassy path between our heart and our head, making us go back and forth to the places where stories hit. You see, she taught us how to ever so gently slice open a vein so that teenage angst could just spill all over a page. Like Tom and Huck, she had us trading our insides with each other, telling us that our best stuff was our weird stuff, our strange stuff, our unusual and our broken stuff. And I still have no idea what she saw in that chubby little kid who sat in the back of her classroom, confined to a pockmarked shell of self-loathing. But whatever she saw, she reached in, grabbed it, pulled it out of him, dressed it up in a blue sparkle coat, and set it free. She saved my life. She untangled that invisible electric cord that used to dangle around my neck. Kept my sneakers from dangling just inches above the floor. It was she who unraveled my secret plot to blow that whole middle school up. Gave me something better to imagine than a well-placed bullet between the eyes of the mean girl who never looked my way. Build a world with your words, boy. Find forgiveness in mud puddles and forgiveness in fallen leaves. Sit under a full moon and know that your grandmother loves you, boy. Give back what you've been given. Pick up a pencil and write, boy. Right till you get it right, just right till you get it right, you're all right, get it right, just right, just right, get it right. You're all right. It's right. Just right. Twenty-five years later, I find a picture of that young man who sat in the back of her classroom. And I see the monsoons of emotion rising inside him. I go to my desk, find that pencil. And I begin that slow journey between my wrist and my elbow, looking for a soft place. Yeah. For Mrs. Beebe and all the time.